Hey guys, welcome back to Mind State, where we help you reach your full potential. In today's video, we will be discussing 7 ways to comfort a friend who's grieving. When you're trying to help a friend who's grieving, it can be tricky to know how to navigate the situation. You don't want to say something that will cause them more pain or embarrassment. And you also don't want to say nothing at all, which could make them feel like they're alone in their pain. But here's the thing. There are no perfect words. There is no magical phrase that will make everything better. And there are definitely not enough stories in the world to make up for every wrong thing that happens in life. So when someone is grieving, just try your best and know that sometimes, even if you say all the right things, they might still say something awkward or weird. And that's okay too. It's just part of being human and grieving together. We know you mean well. But when someone you know is grieving, it's hard to know what to say or do to try and help them. In this video, we'll share 7 tips for being a compassionate friend during a time of grief. We hope these tips will help you to better support your loved ones and in turn, feel supported yourself. Number 1. You don't have to have all the answers. When you're grieving, your friends are going to show up in all kinds of ways. They might bring you food, they might take the kids for the day so you can have some quiet time, they might give you a hug and tell you that they're here for you. That's all well and good, but what do you do when your friend asks for help? When someone is grieving, it's not necessary for them to receive something from you in order for them to feel better. In fact, there are times when people need more from their friends than just a warm meal or a listening ear. They need an open, honest version of themselves who's willing to stay with them when they don't know what else to do. And if we can give others permission to do that with us, then maybe we'll be able to give ourselves permission too. It's easy to get caught up in trying to say the right thing. We don't want to make mistakes or come off as insensitive, so we end up saying nothing at all. The best way you can help someone is by showing up wholeheartedly. And sometimes, that means just being present without any words at all. So if you find yourself struggling with what to say during a difficult moment, or if you're worried about saying the wrong thing, try these phrases. Hey, I have no idea what this is like for you, but I care about you and want to help. This allows us freedom from trying to say the right thing and instead being able to show up wholeheartedly. Number 2. The greatest gift you can give someone is your attention. You know it's not your job to fix your friend, right? You're not a repairman. You're a friend. And there's no manual for grief. It's just what humans do after they lose someone. I know it feels like you need to be the one who helps them get through this. But the truth is that they will get through this on their own terms. In their own way and with their own support system. And that can look different from person to person. So if they need space and time alone, give it to them. But you can be there for them by listening to them. Listening to someone with an open heart is a gift. It's true. It's a beautiful thing. It doesn't even require any effort or skill. Just an attitude of openness rather than a calculating mind that's always thinking about what to say next. When you bring an attitude of openness to your conversations, you create a space of sacredness between you and the person you're talking with. It's amazing how deeply people can go when they have the chance to reflect on their own story without being cut off by another person who's busy talking about what she wants to say next. Number 3. Keep an open mind with no hidden agenda. A good friend doesn't burden you with advice or demands when she sends a text message. She simply says, Hey, thinking of you today. The messages often come on days that are difficult, like Mother's Day or birthdays. It's the thought that counts more than the actual words. It's a concept that can be applied to any relationship. A good friend knows that sometimes all you need is a little reminder that she thinks of you and cares about your well-being. And that can come in the form of a simple text message. It says, I'm here for you. 
whether it's just because I want to give you a hug or because things are going horribly and I want to help cheer you up. A good friend doesn't tell you what to do or how to live your life. She lets you know that she sees what is happening around her and she wants to support her loved ones through those difficult times. Number 4. Be specific when you offer to help someone. The best way to help a friend who is grieving is to start with listening. Are they talking about feeling exhausted or overwhelmed? Then step in with a specific request like, I have some free time tomorrow night. How can I make your two nights easier? If they need you to listen, then just do it. Offer them a few minutes of your time. And let them know that they don't need to say anything at all if they don't want to speak. In fact, sometimes silence can be more helpful than talking. In addition to listening, there are other ways that you can lend support as well. If your friend has kids, offer to babysit one night so their spouse can have some time alone with their partner or for themselves. Or take care of the kids for the whole weekend so that the parent can go out to take a breather. Or maybe your friend needs a place to sleep over for a few days because they're just too tired from all the work of caring for their loved one during their illness and want some relief from being at home alone all the time. The point is, don't assume that you know what's best for someone who is grieving. Instead, ask questions and listen carefully before making any suggestions or offering assistance. Are you liking the video so far? Before we get back, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to get notified of our new uploads. Now let's get right back to it. Number 5. Don't just do it for the short term. The second year of bereavement is often worse than the first. Why? Because it's hard to get back into the swing of things when you're still in the thick of grief. You're still adjusting to life without your loved one, but there are so many pressures on you that you can't let your guard down. Friends and family expect you to get over it and just move on with their lives. But they don't understand that grieving doesn't work like that. It's not something that just goes away after a few weeks or months. It takes time, patience, and understanding to heal from a loss like this, which makes it even harder when people forget about it because they want you to move on. It can be hard to know what to say when a loved one loses a spouse, parent, or other loved one. We know that because we've been there ourselves. And we've also learned from our mistakes and from the mistakes of others who have been there before us. So here's the thing, don't say anything, just show up. It's true that words can sometimes help in times like these, but they're no substitute for action. When a friend or loved one loses a spouse, parent, or other loved one, it can feel as though a part of you has died too. To show your support for the grieving person, continue to check in on holidays and birthdays long after the first year. Even if you have to put it on your calendar as a reminder, be sure to let them know that you remember their loss and continue to stand by their side. Number 6. Don't let the fear of speaking their name hold you back. You know what else we're afraid to do? Say the dead person's name. Why? Because we're afraid that it'll remind a grieving friend of their loss. But I guarantee you, that friend hasn't forgotten about their loss. In fact, they'd be pretty happy to know you remembered them in your conversation. You see, when we say the dead person's name, we give them life again. We make them present, and not just disappear from our lives forever. I understand that you want to help your friend through their grief, but there's a fine line between supporting them and making them uncomfortable. It's really important to be sensitive to your friend's needs. If their spouse dies and you invite them to a couple's party, for example, they may or may not feel ready to attend. But you can always extend the invitation and express awareness that they might not be ready but wanted to include them regardless. Number 7. Don't make it a personal thing. The perfect friend is a myth. That's because you have your own path to travel which might include bouts of isolation, depression, anger, or denial. And unfortunately, this might lead your friend to lash out at you. Don't take it personally. 
your friend is just trying to find their way on their own path. You can offer support and encouragement along the way, but ultimately it's up to them how they want to experience their life and what they want it to look like in the future. And sometimes that means making choices that hurt people close to them. When your friend is feeling emotional, it can be tough to know what to do. On one hand, they might be expressing something that makes you uncomfortable. On the other hand, you may be afraid of offending them if you don't acknowledge their feelings. But here's the thing, if your friend feels comfortable enough with you to let their guard down and open up about what they're going through, then they value your relationship. They trust you to be a safe space for them and to respect their privacy by not sharing information about what they've said or done with others who aren't in on the conversation. If someone says something hurtful or insults you, try not taking it personally. Emotions are temporary. And remember that feelings change quickly. We often feel one way today and another tomorrow. So. Just because someone said something mean doesn't mean they will always feel that way or want to stay friends with someone who makes them feel bad. Hi everyone! Thanks so much for watching Mind State. If you found these helpful and enjoyed watching our content, please click like and subscribe. We'll always provide excellent takes on anything and everything. And also, we'd love to know about your thoughts, so leave a comment below. See you next time!